I, I'm here to talk about this the, this new topic that I started uh, uh, studying in, back in 2016 is the sound localization, right? So it means uh, finding the sound source uh, across the, the the three dimensions, right? So check where where the, the the sound source is in the azimuth, right? It means left and right elevation. It means top and down and distance, right? How, how far it is from you, right? And so it's ma mainly perception thing, right? and but with all the the surroundings there, from uh, it's a very multi uh, follow a multidisciplinary uh, approach, right? And supposed to hear a funny animation here. Ah, now it appeared. Okay, finding the mosquito, right? Using only the sound, right? With the eyes closed. That's the idea, right? To be able to find a sound source in these three dimensions. Uh, only using sound, right? And this the uh, the, the problem of uh, uh, finding the sound source is uh, is not a new problem. Is a maybe is a sophisticated problem for for neuroscience, but it's uh, for engineers. It's a problem that is solved back in in the to the hundred years ago. There were already devices that were able to detect. Uh, detect and find it, really to locate, uh, sound locator from 1927, finding the, 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 the planes, right, using sound. So you have pairs of, uh, two pairs of, 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 of microphones, right, very far from, from each other, right, so it's easier to, 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 to detect it. Uh, any leg of sound, right, the, in, any leg or, or uh, the difference in time of a sound that reaches this these speakers here, right? So the, the left and right. So the sound is coming from 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 more to the left. So the the, the sound ar arrives more faster in the ar arrives earlier in the left microphone, right? So from this difference in 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 time from left and right, you c are able to locate the azimuth of your sound source, right? Here they have it mirrored, mirror, no, no transposed, rotated in 90 degrees, so it's also possible to detect the elevation of that sound source, right, using uh, this system. And, and, and we have something very similar, right? We have the one microphone in each side, so each, each of our ears here, and from this, this uh, tiny differences, uh, it, it's in the scale of microseconds, Right? The tiny difference uh, in in time, and of the, 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 the when the sounds reach the left and right ears, we are able to compute uh, the where this sound is, right? And we have something more. We have a head in the middle of these microphones, right? So we create all, besides the time, we create the level differences, right? So the the head is in the middle, so it blocks. The, 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 the sound and gets weaker in the in the opposite ear and so those are the cues that are used to to locate sound the difference in time and difference in level uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be focusing uh, focusing a lot here in this talk uh, on the time differences right I'll be talking about ITD all the time so if there is a w uh, annoying three l words three letters that you have to memorize is this one ITD follow this because I will be talking about this all the time and so we are uh, um, so uh, the this problem designed by engineers is uh, was already solved in the never was already proposed a solution also by engineers in the neural level right so the, the, this engineer here he said ah using the same logic of detecting the, the this the correcting the legs we can create something similar uh, using neurons, right? Using the architecture of the nervous system, right? So a sound that here is more here, uh, closer to the right ear, for example, there is a very short acoustic delay to, to reach the right ear and a long delay to reach the uh, left ear. Right? Imagine something like that. And the idea is that the sound arrived in the two ears, and this uh, ac acoustic delay would be uh, corrected by neural delay, so uh, longer axons, for example. Right? So the sound arrives fast in the right ear, and it takes a longer path 
to reach a, a, a second neuron, this neuron number one here. While the sound that, that arrives later, right, in the in their left ear, does a short path to reach that same neuron, right? So you can, using this logic of the ley lines, right, longer axons, for example, uh, uh, you can, uh, and coincidence detectors, right? So this neuron one here is a coincidence detector uh, for this uh, cultivation, right, of the activation of the left and the right fibers. Right? A sound that is more in the middle, imagine here, it would f uh, follow similar delay lines. We would have the no, no delay, delay line to correct. So it would be like the neuron four, right? So this, this architecture proposed by this engineer here uh, is, it, it, uh, would be able to 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 use uh, use these delay lines and, co and coincident detectors to activate different neurons, right? Different co coincident detectors, uh, um, in order to, to 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 detect which which is the delay and which is the position, right? So to gather infor get information from which position the sound is coming uh, using only this uh, using this approach. Right? This is the the proposal by. Jeffries, this is called the Jeffries model. If you search in Candel, you will si find something like that, right? In the hearing, uh, hearing chapter of Candel, the book, right? The Bible of the neuroscientists are using all the time, right? Uh, and they they will see that there is this Jeffries model, and this was adapted by a, by a psychologist here, an engineer psychologist. He's in this field, and uh, to create this complete model, right? That comes from the the. The, the sensory uh, in the microphones, right? The ears uh, passing through the audit auditory nerve fibers, and there is some kind of timing timing uh, uh, detector the f dif detecting the difference of times, and he proposes also a, 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 a that the, the the level information, right? So that since we have the the head in the middle, right? That that, that creates the, the 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 difference in level. Uh, this would be uh, also processed and multiplied together, and to create a perception that allow would allow us to 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 make a decision, a sensory decision, right? So w where the sound is, right? So from the sensory input, you would be able to even give a, a motor output saying, ah, the sound came from there, right? Pointing from where this sound is coming. Right? So model completely designed by engineers. There is not a single electrode sticked on the brain here it's just ah this, there is a possibility to deal with this right and uh, and what splendid thing happens when we search with the, 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 the this marvelous this splendid pokemon here right the owls right the 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 the, the, the if, uh, a, a, a brain that was really shaped by evolution to a brain and a head, right? Uh, the, these with these asymmetric ears, right? The the owls have these asymmetric ears, one pointing up, another pointing down, and they're able to disentangle the, the information from elevation and azimuth and putting all together and be able to hunt on the dark, right? This this picture was the picture uh, taken by Marco Nishi, right? There's a lot of pictures taken together, uh, a lot of flashes, right? Super fast and a stroboscope. Uh, 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 old school, right? F photography, and he managed to 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 really see uh, to capture the owl hunting, go going through the going to the 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 the, 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 the object, right? It, the, the the idea was to put a, a, a piece of a piece of paper, right, uh, and uh, roll it in a in a line. Then you just pull, pull the line, and the, the ball of paper was moving around. And, and the the owl was hunting for it, right? And then he he was just uh, taking the pictures of this. So it's an animal that is able to hunt on the dark. He's is able to even hunt uh, uh, rodents uh, under the snow, right? There is a huge uh, uh, barrier of snow, and the owl is just checking there the sounds. And when he locates the sound it just hunts and leaves the snow with the with the with the rat in in, in her uh, paws so it is it's really impressive animal right? and really impressive on the skills and 
and even the behavior is perfect for, for doing experiments, right? They all just see it's there in a fall, and when it hears the sound, it just stares to it, right? It stares to where the sound came, right? That's, uh, and after it stares for a while, that it goes there and hunts. So it's very easy to do behavioral experiments and, and, and to really see where the animal, the, where this owl is looking to. And, and it's possible to do also to do electric. Ah, it has the eyes, right? The, the eyes that he doesn't move the eyes, it just moves the whole head. So it's super easy to do experiments with owls. So, uh, and we, what they found that that solution by engineers is really implemented in the brain of the owls, right? So they, they saw the, the Marconichi was really convinced that there was something. He was inspired by that visual experiments of Robert and Wiesel, right, from the 60s. And in the 70s, he found in this, uh, in the house, uh, a map, right, together with Knudsen, right? He, he, they, they found a, a map in the inferior colliculus, in the external part of the inferior colliculus. They found this map on the, the of the environment so the, a map when i say map uh, it means that ne neighboring neurons uh, uh, are uh, fires to neighboring positions of the sound right so the a sound that is coming from here uh, makes this neuron to fire um, position a sound from here makes this neuron to fire so there is a really a, 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 a topographic map a map right a map of the environment in on, in the uh, in the in the inferior colliculus, right? And so they really found the, the, the solution there. And there is all these details, right? From that mo model of the engineer represented in the owl. There is a lot of physiological support. So the, 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 the pro processing of time, the processing of the levels and the multiplication is like, oh my God, these engineers really, they, 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 they really come up with an idea that it was what the, the evolution uh, showed. Right? So it's the solution that came from, uh, the, 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 the solution proposed by, 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 by the design of the engineers was really the one that was, uh, the, uh, that was shaped by evolution, uh, shaped by natural selection. So they, they really found all the, the, the details uh, of, of this model in the, in the owl. Beautiful, 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 and it, 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 this beauty continues, right? It has this physiological support, uh, but also has the uh, psychophysics support. So there is the 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 uh, 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 it's possible to predict behavior and how are the thresholds of discriminating uh, changes, right, in the position of the sound sources. Right? Here is the uh, old school experiment from the 50s, and that they put a speaker, right? Uh, associated to a, to a device that you can change the angle of this, this speaker, right? You just hold on this bar here and moves, right? And, and you, you can uh, and you can check the, the, you can change the position of the speaker and make a blindfolded uh, subject to, uh, to, to say, ah, the, the, the change was to this direction or to this direction. And you can check the thresholds for detecting these changes in the position of the speaker, right? And what they found is that the, the, the thresholds for detecting changes is very low in the front. So the thresholds are small, right? So you, 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 the, the, it's very high definition in the front, right? So you, you, minimal changes in the front you are able to detect. And in, in, in the thresholds in the periphery are high, right? You have to make big changes, large changes extensive changes to be noticed by the subjects. Eh? So, uh, and this psychophysics support is also connected with the physiological support, right? So there is, uh, this, uh, the, the idea of the engineer was to map the whole, the whole space, right? The whole angles, putting neurons representing every angle, right? every azimuth, right? But uh, what they found in the owl is that there is much more neurons that are tuned to the front positions, right? And that connects with this idea of the, the, the low thresholds uh, in the psychophysics, right? So perfect, right? You have the, this, uh, uh, everything working together. Ah, and also you have the statistics. The, if you compute the amount of information uh, uh, 
or, or that ITD carries about the azimuth, you also have uh, that there is more information in the front, right? The, like uh, you have large changes of the Q, large changes of the difference in time of the ITD with small changes in azimuth, right? But when you go to the periphery, uh, you, you, uh, you need the, the, the changes in ITD are not so big. So there is more information in the front compared to the periphery, right? So you have everything connected together beautifully uh, and, and that's how the, the whole system seems to work, right? And so a model that was designed by the engineers uh, that has this animal that really follows this, has the physiology uh, uh, that uh, uh, implements that solution uh, proposed by the engineers. There is that information uh, story that makes a lot of sense, right? So higher slope in the in the in the front that is related to high uh, to high definition, high capacity of detecting changes. So everything working together. But then there is these two guys here that were studied by these two other guys here, <laughs> and 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 it they broke everything. Right, you have the perfect world that, that everything fits. And back in 2001, these two guys here decide to uh, let's make uh, recordings in the in, in the inferior colliculus and, and of of mammals. Right, and what was observed in the house is really not what is observed in the in the house. You you observe this right, something that you have each neuron. To tune to a different location, each neuron to, uh, tune to a different position, a different different ITD, right? So it's like a labeled line code, right? Each position to a neuron, right? It's like the retina, right? So uh, each position of the world is uh, uh, it's uh, makes a, a tiny part of the retina to fire, and and this all this story goes up to the cortex, right? But and uh, in the owl, there is this labeled line thing, right? That each ITD, each position, uh, is coded by uh, a specific neuron. And when they f put the stick the electrodes in the in the colliculus of the in the inferior colliculus of the I don't know how to say this in Portuguese in English. It's, it's, uh, the, 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 uh, it's guinea pig. I think. Guinea pig, yeah. exactly. And uh, and in, in you put check in rodents, what you see. You see uh, 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 that all the neurons are tuned to this more or less the same location, right? Instead of having one neuron to each location, you have all the neurons to the same location, more or less, right? There is a, a, a variability there, but most of the neurons are, uh, are tuned to the same locations, and and. And when you check the here is the b the best ITD right of the b the, the ITD that makes the neuron to fire more, right? So depending to the f depending of the frequency, there is a best ITD. All of them here is 250 hertz, so it's more or less here, right? So th there is a variability across ac across it, but there is a a, a very clear uh, mean, right? And when you increase the frequency, you have ITDs that are lower the best it is but the, the funny thing is that the ITDs here are huge right is like uh, 600 microseconds 600 microseconds is the difference of ITD that a human has but the head of a rodent is minimal here is the, the maximum difference of the sound between the left and right ear the, the time that takes like right? you, you just make, make the, the physics uh, speed of the uh, speed of sound and the distance how, how many how much time it would take a sound to reach here the difference in time from re from reaching here to reach here right so it's like uh, in the order of 200 microseconds so you have a lot of neurons most of the neurons are tuned to a sound that the animal never hears you have a rodent of a head of <laughs> super tiny head, but it's like you have to take the ears of the the, 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 the you have to put in a human head. So it's completely nonsense, right? How you have neurons that are tuned to sounds that are never listened, 
is outside the physiological range. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But, and it really not follow that labeled line code, right? That there is all the neurons are tuned to the same thing. And, and what they propose is, is that there is a firing rate code, like a sound that is more to the periphery, it, as more to the periphery this, the sound source is, uh, higher is the firing rate. Like so, the rate is 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 a, is a code like the, the, the in the in the in the sensory sens uh, somatosensory system, right? So like pain, right? If there is a lot of pressure, right? More pressure and uh, is higher firing rate, right? So instead of having a labeled line, it seems like it's a firing rate code, right? So different. To totally different idea, right? And but they, they made this okay. So there is some logic on, uh, on this uh, on this uh, way of making the, the the coding of the the positions, but it's uh, but when they try to f make they, they they made some model of, of physiological support. I won't got get into the details of this, uh, but they they have some physiological support, but they are really poor on the psychophysics uh, side. They, they, here they could predict all the psychophysics very beautifully, right? And with better in the front, blah, blah, blah. But with this this system here, they, they propose, the proposal that they made made very poor predictions of the, uh, of, the uh, uh, of the behavior, right? So it's a model with good physiological support, poor Psychophysic support, uh, but it has on the other side some evolutionary support, right? This is some natural history, right? That the, the that this is the system to compute difference in levels, uh, and probably these uh, animals, uh, the mammals, were before in the, or listening only to levels, and this system is a change on that system to detect levels. Is that just a time, just a, a, a tiny difference? Well, but anyway, it's a, uh, so we we end up with two different models of how the 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 sound can be perceived and computed, right? One that is very well supported by owls, right? That has strong physiological support on the owls and has uh, psychophysics, human psychophysics working well, um, ha has that engineer model. Right? And, and the other side, there, there is this uh, uh, this really uh, ugly system, right? That is really not what an engineer would propose. It's something that, okay, is like uh, let's make a quick fix here, a quick fix here. Uh, evolution made it work, so it works. It's not beautiful, but it works. Right? That that idea, right? So th there is this model that has uh, uh, has a reasoning and 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 has support of the, uh, the, 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 the the physiological data, but very poor psychophysics uh, 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 prediction. And what they, these two groups, the groups that were believing in this model, uh, they are meeting the people that were coming to the other model in a conference, and they were fighting there. One saying that the other is super stupid uh, how you can have such a model that has zero physiological support and how you can uh, have a model that has zero f uh, psychophysical support and they were there and this fight continued for like 20 years right then it, it, it was really a shame what was happening there the groups that were not interacting very well and then i arrived there right i was in my uh, 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 that's when i uh, uh, it was short, shortly after I started working with hearing, right? I came from a background of psychophysics and electrophysiology, but with definitely different problems of uh, in neuroscience, right? Nothing related to, to hearing. And then I, 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 I was in the Jose Pena lab, right, in, in, in New York, and and I, I, I started in this field. Then I was I was just using the tools that I learned back in in in, in Rio Grande do Norte, right, in in. Uh, in, during my postdoc, uh, working with electrophysiology, and I decided to use the tools from electrophysiology to analyze sound, right? And from these tools, I discovered something different, right? That the way that the people, the, the, the traditional tools, were just giving 
the ITD related to the azimuth. Right? So there is, but here I started using something different. I started putting mean. Right? There is a mean ITD and there is a standard deviation ITD. For this is was something that when I was presenting this in this pres in this in this uh, conference, they said it was like, oh my god, the guy is completely insane. He's saying that there is a standard deviation of the ITD. <laughs> it, and the, it was very hard in the beginning. And, but I came with this here, I used different tools for metaphysiology and I came up with these two different statistics. Right? This one was already established and I came up with this new one. And from the, it's a variability, right? It comes from the interference between the, the, uh, the, the rationale for, for explaining these variabilities that the complex sounds uh, make a, a physical inter uh, uh, s s complex sounds, it has a lot of uh, different frequencies, right? A, a, a continuous uh, uh, band of frequencies. And in the cochlea, the very neighboring frequencies are interacting. And the, fi the 500 hertz is messing around with the, the, the part of the cochlea that fires best to 510 hertz. Right? So one frequency is messing with the other. There is some variability, and this creates this standard deviation. That's the, the reasoning behind this, the, the physics behind this. Uh, but uh, with this, I, there is the piece that was missing, right? It was, they were fighting because they didn't have the whole picture, right? There, is, there was a missing picture, a missing part. So this was the part that was missing and say that everybody was right. That was the idea. Everybody was right, but they need to change a bit the idea. And, and this worked very well and I came with this, the, 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 with these papers were published, and uh, I'm very happy with this. It's the uh, that the, the statistics of natural sounds predict auditory perception, right? Uh, what is the work, right? It's taking these two statistics, the mean and the standard deviation, putting in a in a in a, in a, in a, a, for a traditional formula from fission information is the name of, name of this. Is there is a way of computing information? And that you use the mean and you use the standard deviation, you do some fancy algebra there, and you 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 get the amount of information depending of the location, right? The ITD, depending of the frequency and how much information you have. Right? So it's possible to measure the acoustic information, the amount of information that reaches the ears in the natural environment, right? From the sound that came from that arrived in the ears, you can compute this, 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 this uh, amount of information, right? So the, the hypothesis that the, the, uh, the hypothesis that we had is that the, the environment is like that. So the, the, those are the sounds that come from the front. They are more informative about the azimuth, right? There is more information on the sound about the azimuth in the front and very poor information in the periphery. Well, if the physics is like that, if the sound is like that, if the acoustic world that we are living is like that, our brain has to deal with this, right? So through evolution or learning even, uh, you have to make a neuro, uh, 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 circuits that in the end end up with the information that is it's not possible to create information, right? So if there is a lot of information in the front, uh, makes sense to put more resources, neural resources in the front. Like, so you have more neurons in the front, right? It's not neurons, the number of neurons is, is something different. But it's, uh, in the owls, it will be a number of neurons, right? In the mammals, it's something, something different. But it's, the idea is that you, you can extract, to extract all the information yeah, from the environment, you would extract the, the neuron, the neural fissure information will be similar to the fissure information of the environment, right? One thing would match the other. That was our hypothesis. And um, and the thing is that we, we made some psychophysics in the lab and we found that the information, we, we, we get the thresholds for, for, for different frequencies, right? Representing the sounds on the earphones, but, and the thresholds matches the amount of information that we, from azimuth, that we got from the sounds. So the information of the sounds in the natural environment, that what is is in the x-axis here, predicts very well the thresholds that we measure from psychophysics, right? So it is the, this is basically the idea, right? So 
the, the brain there that is uh, in the end being responsible to generate how the thresholds are, right? Uh, are, are matching with, with, with the natural statistics of the, the environment, right? So we have uh, the, this idea, right? So the amount of information of natural sounds predicts the thresholds obtained in the experimental sounds, right? The sounds here are tones and blah, blah, blah. There is not that uh, interference, right, between the, the, the sounds because they are tones, right? So they are not complex sounds. Well, this is the tails. It's just designed sounds to, to make it work very well. Uh, so, okay, we have this, this proposal here. And then we, I made a, fun, a very f uh, interesting simulation, I think. That is, I, I made a simulation that was, I, I created a, a range of neurons, right? N neurons that were tuned to different frequencies. And I was... Uh, changing the position to do that neuron that uh, uh, to to which near that the position to which uh, that, that that was the best position for that neuron, so I, I could say ah this neuron fires more to to the left or neuron fires more to the right or to the front right I was changing th that was the free thing of my, my my simulation I could change to which location the neuron. Uh, 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 fires best, right? And and I was changing these positions in order to match that information of the environment. So if I put the neurons in this way, if I this is the end of the simulation, right? If I put the neurons in this exact shape, I would have a neural fissure information that resembles maximally the acoustic information so i said ah, how to make the brain to have that information of the environment right that was the idea was and what i found here here's the result doesn't seem like a very clear result there is this yellow thing there are more neurons all the neurons tuned to the same uh, to, 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 to the, in the same way that was in that old school physiology physiology result so uh, by this idea of coming from the environment information, put into the neural information simulated, we end up with something that is very similar to the results of the physiology, electrophysiology, how the, the, the to which location the neurons are firing, to, uh, the neurons of each frequency are firing, right? What is the best uh, location? So it's possible to predict the results of guinea pigs and, and mouses and rats and not uh, uh, of rodents, right? And from the from the from the the, the, the this info, uh, amount of information of uh, amount of information of the sound in the natural environment. I'm I'm being too slow. How much time I passed? I didn't control for that. You. Um, there has been 30 minutes, you have 15 minutes more, or we can go a bit longer if you need to know. I think 15 minutes will, will finish well. Well, so that's the whole story, right? So, ah, the natural is that I, I didn't stick the electrode still in the, the rodents to see if the, the, the neuro fissure information really matches that, but it, it really seems that, uh, that, that this works and makes complete idea right it's still some work to be done on this way but it really seems that this that uh, the, the the natural sound statistics the sounds of the the, the the statistics of sounds of natural environments predict the perception in psychophysics and even in what we have from electrophysiology data right that's the that's the that's the finding right that's the what we are proposing okay. And, and this is work done, right? And there is the new work that I'm, I'm doing now that is with the next step, right? From how we say from where the sound is coming from. Not detecting changes, but really making a, a sensory decision uh, or, or, or estimating from where the sound is, right? So we, we, if we are uh, not in the in, in the real world we are searching for something right we are uh, a, a, a predator is searching for the prey right um, the, 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 the searching for the 
the prey, you need to really have a decision to where to go right, to find your prey. Okay? Or if you're a prey, where is the predator? So you run to the other, other side. But you really, to, you really need to know from where it's coming right, to make a, 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 a proper estimation of from which azimuth is coming there. Right? And, and we continue with that model from the engineers. Now everything changed, right? With all the quick fixes of the evolution to deal with the, the, the rate code and uh, all these stories of statistics. And so we are trying to deal with this part here, with the decision, uh, with the position estimate, right? Is the decision making, right? And really the sensory decision making. And, and it works from we, if we put humans to locate uh, uh, speakers, we put speakers in the different angles, right, in different azimuths, and play a broadband now noise and check what's the position that the person points, you see that there is this x, uh, x equals y, right, so it's really very beautiful prediction from where which the sound comes, right? In the front, there is less variability. In the periphery, there is more. But we are really good to do this, right? Uh, okay, but this is broadband noise, right? And, but then we are, our cochlea is filtering the, the sounds in, in frequency bands, right? And in narrow frequency bands. And we the, uh, we have we seen that f the mean ITD thing across azimuths, right? That has that sigmoid-like sh uh, shape, right? If you invert the x with the y, right? So instead of putting azimuth in the x, you start putting azimuth in the y. So the idea is that the stimulus is an ITD. You have to judge which azimuth is that, right? So that's why I changed the the the, the axis, right? So uh, for for, for each frequency, so you have the ITD, you have the azimuth, right? So you have this uh, curve with this shape, right? But when you put the, the people to estimate, you present that ITD, right? And ask them to, to say which ITD is that using tones, not broadband sound. Here it, with, with, it was with broadband sound. But now broadband noise, right? So it's a tsh, right, or a sound that has a lot of frequencies altogether. But if you put tones, like right, right, so lower and higher tones, what the people do is something that really does not match to that. You see, here it has the highest slope on, on the periphery, right? And here in the periphery, the slope is zero. So it's opposite, right? One thing is, it's doesn't. So the the what is observed behaviorally doesn't follow really the acoustic relationship, right? And that's not something new. If you put the, the there is this classic work with so, uh, sound image localization, right? You put sound in the earphones, you see this this uh, this sigmoid-like curve, right? Like here. And and this is often interpreted like a, ah that's a is a limitation of the task. There are some weird saturations, and what I think is no, it's more than it, it's not a bug. It's a feature, right? It's not a b bug of the, the the system. It's a feature of the system. The system has to work like this. So there are really perceptual biases. That's what I'm trying to defend here. That is really. Uh, biases from the the, uh, the, acoust the acoustic relationship is the is is the blue and what do we, how we behave is the red and there is the, the the some biases here and there and we need all these things together with complex cues to to be able to do something like that I think this is really what is our perception right and I made this experiment so I put sounds in the earphones and I asked the people to click on the, the where the sound came right so I presented the sound on the earphone so it's just an ITD that I'm giving right just the cue on the earphone so the sound is not anywhere right it's just a different I just put in the cue that is used to, to create that percept that the, the percept of of position and I just asked the people to uh, to click where they felt the sound the sound came and then uh, and I was measuring 
with the position and I was measuring this across several trials so I have the variability of the the responses too and I have I was asking also I was checking how much the time the people took to start the movement so I have some some kind of reaction time uh, uh, measures and I have the confidence the, the people are saying ah, I, point, I pointed correct I pointed bad I pointed random right so they, they were giving some some level of, of confidence a report of confidence right and, and that was the experiment that generated this graphic and okay that that was the experiment and and I really believe that this is a, a feature of the system and one of the evidence that I have uh, is uh, it's something that I made with collaboration with Andrew Frankel and uh, Dermont. They are from MIT guys, right? They created a, a, a neural network, a deep neural network, right? This artificial intelligence, heavy metal computing, right? And they put, they created a, a, this network and they trained this network to find sound, right? So it's a network that hear acoustic sound and say where the sound came from. Right? They made this in the real world, so it was microphones in the head of a, a mannequin, right? So they put microphones inside the, the ear of the mannequin, and the mannequin had to, uh, the, the computer was saying which azimuth, that, that uh, azimuth and elevation, everything, right? where the sound came from. And and it was able to to track this and but this is too too slow and they are really hardcore computational guys so they put all the physics of the the how the sound the, uh, how is the reflection of the sound and how is the diffractions and all the physics of of, of, of the real world so they are able to simulate all that so they made this artificially too right so you just put the sound uh, with all the, the natural statistics simulated in the computer and you update the, 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 the weights of that net neural network and in the end you are able to create this is the, 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 broad, the, the black line here right the, that the stimulus position in the, in, in, in it's, it matches the position that is estimated right there is a very beautiful black line x equals y and I just saw this, so the guy managed to, to replicate the, net, the, the behavioral experiment, right, of, the, of humans. Then I said, could you please put my sounds in your network? I just sent a lot of tones, crappy sounds for him, right? And he just trained, he checked how the network, his network, his, uh, uh, his neural network was locating the sounds. And again, it appeared there, something like with that saturations, with those biases, a bit like what I found there, right? I said, oh, great, this, so it really seems like a feature, right? Not a bug, right? Uh, something that is only doing this. Well, here you can say, ah, the, the animal is doing much more than locating sounds. It has to reproduce, to, to it has vision, it has a lot of senses and a lot of limitations it's an animal that has to behave properly it's not a sound localization guy right it's a behaving has to survive and make babies right that's what uh, the the animals are much more complex things than this net neural network that is only doing sound localization but this neural net neural this neural network that makes sound localizations has biases and they are similar to what i found behaviorally and I said, wow, this is great. It really seems like something that uh, uh, makes sense, right? And so we, we, we have, we, 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 it really seems that there is this uh, uh, biases here, right? And I said, ah, maybe those uh, stati natural statistics that I was seeing uh, before could predict this, right? So I was putting the, that Fisher information, right? That measure of information of how much azimuth information the sounds from different location different frequencies have and yeah how this could get into this it, it, it was kind of challenging but w w the first thing i managed it, it was to get this mean the w what was the, the 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 mean estimation and the standard deviation of the estimation and i just put in the same formula that creates uh, the the inform the, the a lot to compute information right before i was doing with the the uh, the sound computing the fish information from the sound 
right? But then I said, ah, let's compute the information from the behavioral responses, right? So I have a mean, it is like, I'm a biologist, right? So I, I, I will put the, it's mean, it's the division, I'll put them together there. And I, and I, and I created a official information of the behavior that kind of matches. And I said, ah, maybe it could be something like that. Maybe the, the response, could, this is an ongoing project, right? It's not really something established, but it seems that there is better information uh, in the in the behavior, more information in the front in the behavior, and more information in the sound, so it kind of matches, could be a solution like that. Right? But the idea was more like there is a lot of resolution in the front, it's like there is a lot of points, right, a lot of, uh, we perceived a lot in the front, so it's like there is a, a lot of points there, right, a lot of pixels, <laughs> auditory pixels to see in the front, in the periphery, there is not many pixels, right? So there is not much to see there. Right? That's more or less the idea. And uh, so we have uh, that from this, we could create this fishing information thing, right? Because th in the end, it's kind of weird, right? Because we have very high variability in the front. If we are so good in the front, why we have such a big variability, right? It could be like we have a bigger resolution, so we are not sure if it's here, 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 here. There is a lot of positions, so we are never sure, and we are and, and we are pointing here and there and creating variability of the responses. Right? And the, in in the periphery, in the opposite, like I don't notice if I don't see, there is no problem. I can do it with very low variability, right? And this matches also with the reaction time. The reaction time is high in the front and low in the periphery, and the confidence is high in the periphery. It's like it's really like that. Uh, the under uh, it's like a psych psycho psychologic effect. Right? The under is the guy that uh, is an effect that you don't. Uh, uh, the less you know about something is is uh, the less you the, the less you know about something is uh, the more simple it looks. Right. The, so we, it, here in the front is very, we know that it's complex, so we take forever and we are very low confidence. But in the periphery that we are very bad, very stupid, so we are, we have very, we are very fast and very confident, something like that, right? Is this, this idea, right? So we are, we have more stringent, more careful estimations in the, in the, in, in the front and more automatic in the periphery. Uh, and this kind of matches the discriminability of the, the, the sounds, right? That the, the fishing information, auditory, the acoustic fishing information. Uh, and this stringent strategy is more accurate, right? It does really what it's, it's supposed to be here. Don't have accuracy, accuracy responses, but it's very accurate in the front. Uh, but it's more variable, more time consuming and l less confident, right? And the periphery is biased, is stereotyped and, and fast and low variability f uh, with high confidence, right? That's the, the whole idea. And then we are putting this in Bay Bayesian framework. So there is some priors, right? In the, in we, we, we came up with this idea that there is this priors in a weird way and this could generate the responses. We are still figuring out how to explain this in more, uh, this is like hacking, right? We hacked, uh, we took the prior that would create that behavior. So uh, we are still trying to figure out a way to justify this well. And, uh, but we, we have an information framework that uh, uh, allows to generate this, these behaviors. Right? We still need to do something more brain-like, right? So not yet done, right? Something that really works. Um, well, this is the work in progress. I have some other work in progresses too that is dealing with uh, with people that has uh, impaired vision, right? The, the blind blind people, and they are really the owls of the <laughs> the owls of the, the the human world, right? They have very good azimuth estimation, very good distance estimation, but unfortunately, they have very bad elevation. This is something that not many people know. They have very poor elevation estimation, right? It's, uh, elevation is something that you it cannot be very hardwired. It's very dependent of how your ears are and the morphology of your ears. 
So it's something that you really need the vision to be able to train the the to to be to train the hearing, right? So uh, elevation is something that is really learned, right? You can learn if you if you change the the position the the shape of your ears, right? Right? Holyfield like I don't know somebody bites and takes a piece of your ear and you, you really change all the cues and you have to relearn it and you can do this uh, you take about one month two months but you 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 really can learn elevation but the the blind people have no vision to guide this right so they have very poor elevation and this is something that creates a problem to their their everyday life but specifically it's very it's something that is very challenging for the people playing sports right I, I, I'm, I'm dealing with the people from the para, Paralympic uh, at, at athletes uh, that, that has blind uh, problem with vision and they are playing soccer right different types of games of soccer and and, and, and we could hack the system if, if we created a way of training the elevation for them right that's something the project we are starting this before the pandemics uh, but we are planning to do this now and and to really train them and give instead of giving a visual cue like to, to train it's not possible right to give auditory also right ah the sound is coming from more from the top so we record the sounds on the ear of the people and re and tell uh, uh, this sound came from the top this uh, this sound came from the bottom and put them to train 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 Right, and and maybe they would be able to learn this. Right, it's something that is possible to to give some elevation cues for them. Right, and if we create and to do this, we have to create some systems. Right, like the system that were designed for the owls, and and there is a lot of other applications from software, games, and uh, communication. Right, to start using uh, spatial sounds on the communication. Right, and. And that's it, right? My work is is, is this uh, chain, uh, flight on the engineer world and statistics and and natural history, psychophysics, and and now I'm trying to put some 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 uh, some uh, effort on the application uh, of, of, of this this uh, auditory stuff. And but yeah, that's it. The sound on the work on sound localization. This is my email. I'm here from Brazil. I'm working in FABC and doing the advertisement here. And here it's done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pavão. That's really exciting work, honestly. I, yeah, I mean, it's really cool how to see with another eyes um, how we see the world, right? How we we perceive. It's really cool too. Um, I have a few questions, but uh, I'll open for the students to make questions before. Um, they also read your previous papers, published papers, so they also might have questions of that. And also maybe of your career choices, what guide, guide you to this point. So Great. if they feel like um, unmuting and asking. Everybody says a lot. Thank you in the chat. Just say, I'm very informal. Just say the stuff. I'm very glad to, to talk. Can open cameras. Feel free to do whatever you want. Use like so. Just to, um, I mean, while they organize their questions, I have one suggestion actually for training the the blind athletes or blind um, subjects. Mm. Have you thought on tactical cues? So basically, because they are very good on that, right? So they can learn where the sound is coming from. If you put a tactical map on front of them, I don't know if that could be like, oh, it's coming from the top, then they, they will find whatever cue you put on the top. And if not, they will find on the bottom and that will create their um, mind map out of that, right? I mean, it, it would be something different from two auditory cues, right? Yeah, I think it would be very interesting. It's something like doing an array, right? An array of speakers that yeah. really vibrates, right? There is this, uh, the sound is coming from there and it's <laughs> shaking so the guy can touch these, these speakers. That could be something cool too. It use a different, uh, and this is really, really putting just the, 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 the sounds, right? You really don't have to, mm -hmm. to do any training on, on which uh, which location is that speaker, right? He can just touch and see which one is vibrating, right? It, actually, 
it's a very straightforward way of dealing with this, right? Allow them to touch the the the. the Where speakers. the sound is coming from, right? The the yeah. the, 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 the problem is the problem is that this has to be very close, right? Or yeah, we can or we can right create hand. something different, right? Something that is like a map, right? Uh, mm -hmm. an array in the, 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 we say that touch the array understands the array and there is a array in their palm right so they just touch yes. and see and where it is they communicate with the, where you program the sound to come from right yeah, like I think from that's a, a very very cool idea and, and and it seems very much simpler than what i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> <I'm glad. laughs> thank you <laughs> hope it works on us <laughs> let's see, let's see. <laughs> Um, so you. anyone has any questions or suggestions or just a, a chat about ideas? Emma wants to make a question. I can start. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. I was just curious, like you talked about how you're able to apply like your skills in electrophysiology into sound localization. How did you end up in sound localization to begin with? Yeah, it's a funny path, right? I, 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 I am a... Uh, I like to change the topic that I'm working every year or every two years, right? It was very, the PhD for me, it was very challenging because I have to be for four years in the same project, right? And it, it, I, I had always this, this, <laughs> this, this thing, right? And, but it was, I, 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 I end up with in, in this because uh, before, before uh, I was searching for a very beautiful clear electrophysiology thing right then I, I was working with hippocampus before and okay it's amazing play cells time cells it's everything is so beautiful but when you see the the recordings of the auditory the, the that the, 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 everything bef be before midbrain right so it's really pawns and midbrain it's auditory nerve everything is so clear it's so obvious this the, the physics works right? it's not it's really it's, it's super simple problem and that's something that I, I i was really trying to be able to use quantitative methods and uh, when i was in this complicated com cognition thing uh, I, I was not really able to to do this quantitative approach and this was something that was complicated enough to be interesting, but simple enough to be able to use physics and statistics to really capture the thing and to make have a good reasoning, right? And uh, I was actually so I was running from cognition. That's what <laughs> that's uh, that was my uh, and and I uh, uh, and there was opportunity there that and I have a very good friend that was visiting the the Jose Peña lab, right? In a conference, it was a neurotology conference. And he met this professor exactly when I was in this crisis with hippocampus and cognition, and uh, that's how I end up there, right? But I end up, I, I went there to work with owls, right? I, 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 I was in Brazil, I moved to US to to, to work with owls, uh, but uh, then other problems, and I end up with the the basic things I used to know, data analysis and psychophysics. And I went to our lab and worked with humans, right? I <laughs> was the guy that <laughs> created a new topic there. But it came from this pursuit for simple, straightforward problems. Yeah. It's, uh, and I think it's kind of I I to reveal these things, right? It's a problem that was there for 20 years and nobody was there. It was just a different look, right? Somebody that came from different field that was too lazy to learn the tools that everybody uses and no i have a tool that is much better and then poof, and I, poof, I hit with the solution right it was really the laziness of learning new methods the determination to use what they already knew that created this but it was a lot of coincidence so it's, you see how much coincidence is in this game right yeah thank you so much for your answer thank you <laughs> um so we have a question on the chat. For individuals with vision loss, do they have different forms or types of neurons that are more efficient than healthy individuals? So what's, what would be the changes on people with, that are visually impaired? I, I, uh, they, there is different things happening there, right? So the, 
there, there is a uh, there is some people that say that the thresholds are different sometimes are better sometimes are worse it's not very mm, consensual I made my, some experiments myself with the sim protocol that is was working in the for detecting thresholds and I see zero difference between the the, the ITD thresholds of the, the, the blind and the normal. It's exactly the same thing for the thresholds. But I really, but it's not, right? They are able to navigate with sound. <laughs> so it's not, it's not on the ITD threshold. It's definitely not in the ITD threshold. Uh, and and uh, it's more like in the strategies to use that information. Right. They have only this information, right? The best information they have is the auditory, right? If you, if we try to do something with auditory, we are, we are so bad, right? I, I don't know. Sometimes in the beach I was doing this, right? Closing my eyes and walking in the beach with the eyes closed. I knew that, that but I was so sure that I would hit something because I had zero idea of what is happening. It's, it's really, we are not used to work with this information. The vision is so much more reliable that we don't give enough attention. It's just to ah, well, just to direct the look, right? Ah, it came from there, so you look more. It, then you look and find the thing, right? So I think the, it's a matter of strategy. Of I think it's something more cognitive, cognitive, more, with more cognition there. It's not really in the basis of the threshold thing. Right? There is this part on the ITD and the, the strategies there is something interesting is is about the precedent precedence effect is something that the psychologists call it precedence effect it's something like the when you hear the, we are always in a uh, echoic uh, environment full of echoes right and we are everybody now is in a room probably right and even even though we are in the rooms that the sound propagates hits the wall and come back and degrades everything. We are still able to localize sound in this echo, this, uh, this environment full of echoes, right? And that's something that is really uh, we uh, we end up with a solution, the natural selection and natural selection and learning, right? Who knows which one is, is hard to do, but we end up with this precedence effect is like we are paying attention only to the first wave of sound right so um, uh, that's the norm the, the the normal vision person just detects the fir first sound and if there is another sound from another location another direction coming five milliseconds after we ignore it it has to be higher than five milliseconds after to so if you come sound from here and here Right, one location and another. You just, you just say, ah, where is the sound perceived? The the first one. That's something that happens. But the blind people has something interesting. They started listening to the echo. They break this. Uh, uh, some blind people, right? Very good, echoic listeners, right? So there is the people that are able to listen to the echoes and navigate with the echo. So there is these strategies of doing to, 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 to walk in the room doing this. And so they are able to detect the echoes and run away from walls and don't hit this stuff. So it's like they are doing like bats do, right? It's echo localization, right? It's, but they do this in the in the lower frequencies. They, they try to do sounds that are high, right? The, the uh, echo localization works very well with high Pitch sounds, right? So the, the 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 bats are in 40 kilohertz, right? Super high, 40, 80 kilohertz is ridiculous, right? They are doing the they are just vocalizing, trying to get higher frequency, like 10,000, 10 kilohertz, right? They're doing these high pitch sounds, and they are able to detect the the the, the echoes of these high pitch sounds and and navigate. So it's really if if if, if you check for this psychophysics, right? detecting one sound and two or the, the, some blind people are able to detect two sounds and some of them are able to localize the same one that are able to localize are the ones that listen to, to the two sounds right some from here and from here 
So it's really the the the, the bats, right? Like they are really good on this because they 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 remove something that is very basic from uh, auditory perception. So this is something different. So strategy and echoes, that's what. Uh, uh, but they have terrible of, uh, elevation, right? This is something that has to be trained, and I think this is a huge possibility to change, right? To really to train mm -hmm. this this. Because the, the, the elevation is about the, the spectrum of the sound, right? The sound that comes from the top are a bit different from the spectrum that is coming from the bottom, right? And if you do this with the, your natural shape ears, you see, you, you detect this. But if you squeeze a bit your ears, you lose it completely. You have to ask somebody to do the sound for you, right? You cannot do the everything to get. But, uh, uh, but, uh, and so it's, it's really something that you have to learn with your own ears, right? It's some um, training, right? And I think this is something that is possible to generate a tuning, to generate a, a learning these spectrums the, the, for the, the, their own ears and uh, using this training, hopefully with this tactile suggestion that Daniela suggested. Yeah. Oh, we Thank, you. About Thank you. Thank oh. you. Thank Sorry, you. do we have more questions? And um, we have time for one more question. We are running out of time. I have one curiosity question. It's just like crazy idea. What about the ASMR ASMR sounds that you see everywhere? There is a, a lot of these walking um, around your head with the headphones, right? And people would seem to get really relaxed about that. Is it about the quality of the sounds or the movement of the sounds or is uh, post -pro like something higher processing that just connected with this pleasure cues or something like that? I remember when there was a, a hype on these, right? This was like three years ago, four years ago. And, I, 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 it, uh, and they, some people came to me with this question and I searched for papers on this and <laughs> articles, real science, no. There was not. I didn't search for this recently, uh, but I know that with this they are playing with the uh, how this is recorded. They just put the microphone very close, right? Sometimes they have this binaural microphone, right? They have this uh, the, the, the 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 head like a mannequin with the two ears, and you speak very close, and you blow, and you do some weird sounds, and from one side. So there is this 3D thing, not really 3D because it's more like left and right right because nobody was doing with your own ears right you have to but it has this uh, very close thing and the, the spectrums of sound that is very close or the or the the this playing with the left and right and so i, I think it's this is the, the 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 i think it's something related to closeness right it's something that you do when you are very close with somebody that you hear this sound. So I think this is arousal thing. This <laughs> it, it, it's something related to that, right? You can generate, and you can you have the super stimulus too, right? You do this with earphones in the high high volume, so it's it's better than reality, right? It's something that is too real, too 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 too, too strong to be true. Right? It's like it's the super stimulus, right? I think is. In this idea of this uh, ethology thing, right? That you, like the the, the, the like when you you uh, that we are making the the we take something that is attractive, like for example the the, the blushes in the eye or the the, the pupil dilation or the the the, the in women the, the, the in the in the man the, the how thick the, the the chin is or in the women how small is the the proportions between the uh, I don't know the, the the body here, right? I don't know the names of the <laughs> the, the parts, and and you yeah, and you play with these, right? Like the putting those, mm -hmm. you know, making the beard super big and or uh, using makeup and it's like making ASMR. I I would say that is like a super stimulus of closeness. Is this something mm -hmm. in this path, right? It's something that we are really. <laughs> It's like heightening pleasurable sounds and make it more dynamic around you. Yeah, and, 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 and it's always something that the, the, the ASMR sounds are always uh, often are uh, 
presented together with videos and is from a very attractive person, right? They don't put a, <laughs> a ugly person doing that sound. It's something like really make the to play with these uh, uh, things that are attractive. And I think it's more in this way, right? Uh, super stimulus mm -hmm. and closeness. Oh, well, thank you so much, Fabio. Thank you for accepting our <laughs> invitation to give this exciting talk. And um, I'm going to share your contact information with the students and give some feedback later. But, but just, well, thank you so much thank for you joining us today. Okay. Thank you very much. It was very cool.